Well, hi everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Photoshop Elements Imaging Tips and Techniques, or Techniques and Tips. Uh, and anyway, uh, we're, before we continue on with our series on uh, tools in general, uh, I thought I would just uh, bring this up. Uh, it's, this is something that I made, at, which could be an ad piece. It's for our friend Mike Filbert at Spear Volvo. He makes these beautiful pens, uh, turns the wood and finishes them, and uh, makes a really elegant pen. This happens to be one that he gave me for Christmas this year, which was really nice. So uh, I wanted to just say that a lot of times uh, things that might look a little difficult uh, sometimes are, are really not that hard to do or uh, that we that we do sometime in photography this might be something that you could put together and do yourself or at least to have an application at least I'm going to give you some uh, ideas on what's going on here uh, this is a one light picture it uses a, a an umbrella light so that it's fairly broad and soft and it uh, creates a fairly soft shadow and it's to the left and upper part uh, and it's creating uh, the overall lighting and some highlights along here especially and I wanted to make sure since this is a round pin to give it a sense of roundness so a really flat lighting would not do that it had to have uh, some highlights and some gradation or shadows but not to go too deep and because we wanted to see all the, the wood grain and things. Well let me show you where I started out here. Well, uh, this is uh, was shot in camera raw, and this is the the raw dialog box. If you're not shooting in raw or can't shoot in raw, uh, you, you can kind of ignore that because we're we're not really looking at raw uh, techniques here or raw settings. See what I've done? I wanted the pen to look elevated. I wanted it had to have an angle to it. Uh, I photographed this with a macro lens, and if you don't have a macro lens, that's okay too. You can use something close focus and crop in, or a lot of the point and shooters will have a macro setting so you can come in real close. Uh, this is uh, approximately, well, it's actually a little bit larger than life size here on the screen. And what I did is I just elevated the back of it by taping it, and you can see the tape right here to this little lucite. Uh, uh, it was a case for the DVDs actually and it's setting on a piece of white foam core and then this is a vertical piece of foam core over here so that that foam core is uh, bouncing back some of the light from the main light source and uh, also providing some nice highlights all along here uh, you still have uh, a gradation from the, the bright created from the main light in grade eights and it goes uh, moderately dark but not completely and then it also has a very soft shadow right here and um, I wanted to also use that so basically uh, once this was photographed like that I just went in let me, uh, let me pop out of this here real quick Just go, uh, the first thing I did is just went up to image and I got the magic extractor. Now you could use other selection tools. It just depends on you know how you work. You might use one of the lasso tools or maybe even um, the magic wand or something of that nature but the magic extractor worked fine and I used this part right here your foreground brush tool and dotted 
everything that I wanted to keep, which is that, and um, uh, along here in the shadow area, and I wanted to get rid of, and I use this, all the rest of this stuff. The loose side obviously shows, uh, it just has some kind of a bluish along the edges, and here where's the, the base uh, board that I was using. And once I got rid of that, I'll go back here. got to this part right here and uh, this shows you that everything was taken out uh, even took out the, the little uh, piece of tape along here um, and uh, so I have the the pin left and I have its its shadow and all these are transparent pixels which uh, when you when you save these transparent pixels all they are is just white and if they and if you came out with something different and you wanted this to be a white background than I generally did, <coughs> you could just you could just drop that in. But in this case, uh, the transparent pixels work fine here. As I say, they they will show up as white. And then uh, the next thing I did once I before I, I got out of that, I actually reworked that uh, shadow just a bit. And what I did is I used my eraser tool. Uh, the the shadow, if you remember from the first one, it was kind of diffracted by the by the lucite. So I bobbed some of that off, and uh, you see here the shadow itself has some gradation. I used my eraser tool, kind of reshape it just a little bit, and also, uh, as you know, you can use your eraser tool at different opacities and so I did that you know I didn't want to take it all out but I didn't want it terribly prominent either so once that w was uh, accomplished I just went into my backgrounds found this paper background and dropped this right in and as you see here then um, uh, there's my paper background there's the pen with the transparent pixels there's the drop shadow you see it's transparent there so all I did is I just uh, uh, opened up this background, opened up the pin, drug it into the background and positioned it like I wanted it, and then I added two layers of type and, uh, and a border. And for the border, I just chose with my eyedropper tool uh, a color out of the pin itself. And then uh, the, the two, I just decided it's a writing instrument, so I needed to look something like uh, like penmanship, and um, and that's the way uh, this is all put together. This was uh, this one's called Seago Print for this part, and when you click on that layer, it goes up here and tells you, and then you click on your uh, type tool, it's going to tell you. What, what those uh, layers were, oftentimes, and uh, the writing instruments were also in Sego, and it was in Sego script. That was a, a fun project, it was something that you could duplicate yourself, and uh, we're going to have a few more photography tips along the way uh, within our tutorials, as well as, and kind of meld that in with what we're doing. Uh, on the uh, software side in Photoshop Elements. So have a good one, and we'll talk again.